Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel, 7 Spice Life. My name is Lisa and this is my first introduction video and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself um, and my cooking background and what this page is all about. So I am um, 36 and I currently live in Phoenix. Um, my ethnic background is Assyrian, which is not to be confused with Syrian, although there are Syrians that are also Assyrian. Um, it's an ancient Mesopotamian culture and background, and that influences a lot of my recipes and just the way I cook, and you'll learn more about that um, throughout other videos, hopefully. Um, this video is to give you good foundations in tools and um, things I use in the kitchen that make my life a whole lot easier. Um, it's also pretty much unedited, so you get a good feel and an explanation of why I use what I use and what I like as essential items um, without overloading you with a bunch of stuff that you don't need. I'm not a gadget person. I do most of my mincing and cutting and um, things like that all by hand. There are a few gadgets I do use, and when I do, you will know because I will pull them out and explain the correct way to use them. As you all know, one of my favorite tools to have in the kitchen while I'm cooking is a glass of wine. It makes everything more fun and relaxed and um, cooking's kind of therapeutic for me. So this is kind of like my um, downtime or me time and I always like to have a nice glass of red or white in the kitchen while I'm cooking. Plus I can use it in most of my recipes anyway. So, salud! I'm going to begin this video with essentials. Um, there are a few things I always use, but I'm going to start with knives because knives are your most used item in the kitchen and it's really important to understand which knife does what. I stick mainly with three knives. That's all pretty much I use every time um, with the exception of like a bread knife when I need to cut through a big baguette or like a nice big uh, crusty loaf of something. So my first knife is my butcher knife. This is um, also known as a Santoku knife and I get my knives from the Phoenix Knife Shop. They're awesome. Um, they're on Indian School and near 40th Street um, and they'll pick out a really nice knife for you. I like this because the handle is light um, and it has a thin base or shaft as they like to call it and the point is pretty pointy. Um, it's dulled out a little bit over time. I'm due for a proper sharpening but I always sharpen at home regularly with my sharpening rod. Um, this is also from Phoenix Knife Shop. So I have my Santoku and then my detail knife and I probably use this knife um, every single day. It's great for like cutting small items like Brussels sprouts or um, cutting herbs and um, parsley and things like that. Um, but I, I use it for so many different things and it's just small enough to handle really well and quickly um, and light and really sharp. So I love this knife. And then my third most used knife is this tiny serrated knife um, and this is excellent if you ever want to cut through cherry tomatoes or a large tomato or um, just really want to get in there and carve something out nicely. It's super sharp um, and it's super cheap. It was like seven or eight bucks so I love this knife. It never gets unused. The next um, tools I want to talk about are your um, cooking utensils and you can see in the background I have a gold copper um, utensil pot and that just houses most of the spoons and ladles I reach for every single day uh, but my most used ones are an assortment of wooden spoons I always have a slotted spoon it's nice for sauteing um, a non-slotted spoon and this is good for any kind of like sauces or stirring um, and I have a different, heavier one for bigger um, batches of food. And then one that kind of looks like a spatula, and this is great for scraping um, or stir fries or things like that. The other items that I use while cooking are tongs. Um, do not underestimate tongs. They're so useful for flipping meat, um, for picking things up, and I always have different sizes. You can see one is taller than the other. 
and a silicone based one for my nonstick pots because if you use a metal tong or a metal utensil on nonstick, you're going to ruin the bottom of your pan and then you really shouldn't be using that pan at all. Um, the other thing is I have measuring cups. I like stainless steel. They're nice to scrape um, and they're sturdy and I never keep them on the ring. Um, I just stack them like this and put them in my drawer because if you have them on the ring, you're fumbling with them and they're knocking into each other and it's not useful. Um, whereas you can just pick it up, scoop out what you need or measure off what you need and then dump it in and throw it in the sink without dirtying the rest of them. Um, the other measuring utensil I use or tool are the spoons. Sometimes I take these off the rings. Other times if I'm flipping through different measurements, tablespoons, teaspoons, I just keep them on the ring, um, but I whack them out of the way and hold them like this and then scoop what I need or measure what I need and use it. And a meat thermometer. If you are not a really experienced cook or someone that really wants to make sure your meat temperature is right, then I suggest having a meat thermometer in your kitchen. Um, I used to use the non-digital one, but I like the digital one because it's quick and super accurate um, and it's really easy to use. Um, you just pop it in the thickest part of the meat and it'll give you a nice clear reading. The other item I always use are silicone mats. Um, and these silicone mats are really great for roasting vegetables, um, pretty much baking anything you want. And I keep them separate. I use my red ones um, to roast veggies and cook with. And then I have baking mats that I only do pastry and cake with. Um, I don't like to mix them up because you can see these are stained. Um, they're pretty old. But they're still, they work really great, um, but I don't like to mix the baking with the roasting. So these are from Fat Daddio is the brand, and I think they're my favorite ones. You can get them at a professional cook's warehouse or um, a baking store or anywhere where they sell cooking equipment. And I keep them rubber banded like this because it's easier to just whip them out than try and lay them flat and get under to get to them. They go on my baking sheets. Um, and I have this size and I also have a larger sheet pan. Um, you can see here. And I use the larger sheet pan when I'm doing like a one pan meal um, or something that is, I'm making a big batch of. Um, and I use my smaller one for quick things or um, warming up some bread or whatever. I also have these grated um, sheets that are kind of like cookie cooling sheets, but they go right in the pan. You can see they fit the size of the pan. Um, and they're great for crisping things up or making chicken wings. Anything you don't want soaking in its own liquid, it's great for. I just usually spray a little nonstick on there or just soak it after I'm done cooking. Um, so that is most of my everyday most used tools and I'll get right back into it with um, a little more tips and tricks for success while you're cooking. Okay, so moving forward, um, this is just my setup while I'm cooking. Um, I like to use little dishes in all kinds of sizes while I'm cooking when I'm doing mise en place. Mise en place means you get everything pretty much prepped and ready to go before you start the cooking process. So if you have herbs that you finely chopped and know where to put them, put them in a dish. If you have a, a spice mixture that you had to mix together right before you start cooking, put it in a separate dish or an egg um, or any liquid you put it in the dish and then you have them all laid out and ready to go so you can just keep cooking and adding to your pot. I also keep a salt dish. Um, I have kosher salt in here just for um, the video's purpose. I usually use a sea salt, um, but I wanted you to be able to see how it's used. And it just goes up there on my open shelf and I pull it down when I need it. Um, I also try not to fill it up too much so that I'm using it frequently and it's not just sitting there collecting dust. Um, 
You may want to cover yours, but I'm in it all the time and I'm not worried about I don't have to worry about any kind of contamination. Um, and if I'm cooking for a crowd, I always use fresh salt. So I use mine at my own risk. Um, this is my caddy where I keep all my oils that I reach for the most often. Um, you can see here I do have another fine sea salt. That one that I keep in the dish is always a little coarser. Um, a pepper mill because I like to add fresh pepper to all my um, recipes that call for it. Spray oils. This one's a canola and this one's an olive oil. These are useful for baking or um, non-stick pans or anything that I don't usually cook with non-stick. Um, I'll get to that in a recipe where I specifically talk about it. Um, but I like to have all different kinds around. Um, and then I keep my olive oil in these little condiment bottles. It's super easy to just squirt it in your pan um, and warm it up that way and always have it on hand because as I'm cooking, I'm adding different um, oil to different pots, pans, whatever have you. And it's good to have easy, ready, light, and um, ready to go. It's the best. Um, and then vinegar. Uh, I keep red wine vinegar in this caddy because I like to use it frequently and it's good to have on hand. And then I have this balsamic here. It's not open. You want to keep this away from heat if you're not going through these things frequently. Um, but if you do and you're, you know, like I use my oil almost every single day, um, the one in the bottle, and it's important to go through it. So you don't want it getting warm to next to where you're cooking. So if you don't use your items frequently, move them away from the heat and just pull out your caddy when you're ready to start cooking and it'll always be nearby. Um, that is uh, most of my oils and I keep them right back here next to my stove usually. And then not to overlook my most favorite and beloved item, the kitchen towel. You will see in all my recipes, I always reach for my kitchen towel. Um, these are super essential for me. I like them almost better than oven mitts, um, any kind of, um, they are lint free and that's important because you don't want any fibers getting into your cooking. Um, and they're thin enough where you can throw it over your shoulder if you want or tuck it into an apron um, and then handle up pan handle real quickly or use two to lift up a pot um, and one can be a cleanup towel and one can be a cooking towel. So I always have a stack of these ready to go um, and I never use the same one more than like once a day. I, I keep it clean. If it gets dirty in the laundry it goes. So you don't want to reuse these and contaminate surfaces or food or anything like that. You always want to keep a hygienic kitchen so your food is always delicious and safe. So that is my video for um, essential kitchen tools and um, kitchen condiments. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave a comment in the post below. I hope you enjoyed one of my very first videos and I look forward to making more. Thank you and have a great time watching my videos. Have a good one.